couple weeks ago, I had the privilege to roam among giants. Thanks to automotive photographer Larry Chen and Canon and the photography workshop that they put on, I was granted near unprecedented access to traverse and to explore the Peterson Automotive Museum, including their underground lair called the Vault. This hidden basement level is home to an unbelievable collection of historic, iconic, rare, and beautiful automotive treasures. I didn't have any idea that this experience would be so unparalleled, so I didn't bring my usual filmmaking gear, but I did have my camera, so I shot some video of the astoundingly impressive collection they have. Here we are, the vault. It's eerily quiet down here. There's maybe only three or four people down here. And we've got nearly four full hours to walk around and take photos of whatever we want. Some of the world's best cars. So it's pretty nuts. I had no idea we'd have this kind of access here. There's pretty much no one down here. It's really incredible. And it's kind of hard to know where to go first because there's just so much to look at. Everything's so rare and so unique. I mean, look at this thing. This 63 Ferrari 250 GTO is considered by many to be the most significant Ferrari ever made. Only 39 examples were produced. This one sold for nearly $40 million, and more recently another one sold for $70 million. This lovely body contains a 300 horsepower V12 and took second overall at the 1963 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's astoundingly surreal standing a few feet away from this historic Ferrari parked deep in a far corner of this dark garage, just like any other car. Okay, just past this beautiful Oldsmobile 442, we're headed over to the Peterson Museum shop where they maintain, repair, and restore all the cars in this huge collection. Right here, it looks like they're working on this sweet Land Rover. Here's a rad early 80s Chevy El Camino. And right over here is a 1956 Jaguar XKSS. This car has a ton of racing heritage. It's based on the D-Type, which raced in Le Mans. Only 16 of the XKSS models were built. And this one was owned by actor and racer Steve McQueen. Apparently, he used to pilot this machine very quickly down Mulholland Drive in Los Angeles, and he got so many speeding tickets that he almost lost his license. This third generation 1993 Mazda RX-7 concept car is one of one. And it's not even really a car per se, it's a fiberglass shell with wheels. This stunning and now iconic shape was the result of a design competition between Mazda's Japanese and US design studios. This 1971 D Tommaso Pantera has a very storied history. This car was once owned by Elvis Presley and gifted to his then-girlfriend, Linda Thompson. And that's not even really the story. Apparently, after an argument with his girlfriend, he wanted to leave and peel out in an aggressive fashion, but the car wouldn't start. So he then shot through the steering wheel in a fit of rage. You can't quite see the bullet holes through the glass, but they are there. This 21-foot-long behemoth looks like a dictator's car, right? Well, it actually is. This is Saddam Hussein's 1978 Mercedes-Benz 600 Landolet. Given the history of Hussein, it's not likely that this car will be displayed upstairs anytime soon. What I want to know is, how hard was it to get this car out of Iraq in the turmoil at the time of Saddam's fall? Okay, I don't know what this is, but it is officially one of the ugliest cars I've ever seen. I'd like to know more. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments below.
So that's it, what an experience. It was absolutely incredible to be able to photograph those cars in that environment, and even more incredible to have a lot of those prize vehicles all to myself. For an amateur photographer like myself, I'm not sure that experience could be beat. So I hope they do this again, and if they do, I'm definitely signing up, and you should probably too. So that's it for today, thanks for watching. More videos of distinctive automobiles and travel to unique locations coming soon. See you later.